Hi guys, Viking Guitar here, and uh, today we're going to take a little bit of an in-depth look at um, a piece of music that I have uh, recently finished. Um, this is not my normal type of stuff, and in fact this is more of a synthy kind of uh, ambient spacey sort of sound thing that I did um, that's going to be licensed and used in an upcoming video game called Gala Collider. And Gala Collider is currently running a Kickstarter right now. It is a uh, 4X strategy card-based um, game that takes place in outer space, which is um, kind of a... Visually, the game looks awesome, and I'm looking forward to it. And it, um, it was kind of a cool um, sort of setup for me to, to make some music that isn't usually the type of stuff I make. Um, if you're watching this, chances are that you probably know me for more of my hard rock stuff, uh, guitar shreddy stuff, and this is very different. This is about atmosphere. This is about having kind of um, an evolving um, set of uh, kind of textures and sounds to have a prolonged uh, space strategy battle in. So um, if, uh, if this looks like the type of thing you're interested in, uh, definitely head over to the Kickstarter page. The link should be on the screen right now and um, toss a few bucks towards it. You can get some cool rewards for that as well. Um, but for today, what we are gonna do is take a look at this piece of music. So let me just play a little snippet of it here. This is uh, the Reaper session um, finalized and it is not really cleaned up much, so don't pay attention to that, but let's just jump kind of into the middle here. Okay, um, so we're just going to kind of go top down and uh, take a look at how this project is set up um, and uh, kind of look at some of the specific patches and routing and all that stuff I'm using. So um, I'm not sure if you're using Reaper, if you're familiar with it, but the same principles here are going to apply to any DAW software. So um, starting, uh, we've got our master track up top here, and we do have mastering effects running right now. Um, this iPad emulator, uh, this is just a... Um, kind of a chuddy little EQ I had set up to try and uh, simulate an iPad speaker because this is going to be a mobile release. Um, but then I, I found better ways to do that. I found some impulse responses um, that I've loaded into the free reverb plugin that comes with Reaper um, that I can turn these off and on to kind of emulate um, the sound of those devices. So for example, So that's kind of a cool thing right there. It, um, you know, if you're going to be developing something for a mobile device or something that's uh, going to use some sort of uh, specific sound system or um, speaker setup, it, it never hurts to, you know, check how that's going to sound um, on that device. Um, don't mix to the device, but you want to mix in such a way that it sounds good also on that device. So um, taking a look at the rest of the master track here, um, we've just got some kind of global EQ to address some things that uh, needed to be fixed. I'm running Kramer Master, Sta uh, master Tape. Um, it's a Waves plugin that uh, does some analog tape editing, or uh, emulation rather, the Slate Virtual Bus Compressor rack, which I really like, but is really easy to overdo. And then um, we've got Isotope Ozone 4. Still haven't upgraded. I think version 6 is out now. And then a last little bit of uh, Reaper compression just kind of round off um, the overall dynamics and keep it a little bit more consistent. So anyway, that's the master track. And what you'll probably notice right off the bat is that immediately under that, I have a folder track that I call pre-master. And this has everything else in it. And all this is really doing, um, when I was making this thing, I mixed it really quiet. Like it was, it was way too quiet. Um, so before it got to the master bus, I just wanted to group everything together and add a little extra 10 uh, 10 decibels of uh, volume there. Um, anyway, as I mentioned, this whole thing is kind of messy right now. It was a, it was a very um, kind of interesting tangled up process because I was getting inspired by the sounds and I was modifying the sounds as I was composing and stuff. This wasn't your standard, you know, write it and then, 
you know, do all the mixing and stuff later. Um, the whole process was very intertwined and kind of organic in this messy way. So as a result, um, things aren't grouped together. Uh, we don't have things color coded the way I usually do. We've got all sorts of envelopes that are on and then off and all that jazz. So we'll just go through. The very top here, um, we have a very important thing. This is a global reverb bus. And this is something that I have, uh, taking a look at the routing here, you can see it's receiving audio from a whole bunch of tracks. I'm reluctant to say every track, but probably the vast majority of them. Um, and basically this is just a, a reverb uh, bus with a few different reverbs and some EQ on it. And uh, the top one here, not the first one, but actually the last in the chain is the Magnus Audio Ambience reverb I absolutely love. Um, it has the preset name in here, but it, it underwent some tweaking from that p uh, preset. Um, this is set so the wet is 100%, the dry is zero, but then in the actual um, effect wet in Reaper, we've got that set to like 26%. Uh, the EQ here is just to cut out some of the low lows and the high highs and kind of tame the low mids a bit because those things, I don't like having super resonant in EQ. Um, and then the first thing in the chain is actually um, this other free reverb plugin, Epic Verb, which is absolutely exceptional. Um, the... Uh, the wet's 100% on this and it's full on. So um, basically this is just kind of a, a level of polish that I route everything through to give it some uh, extra space, especially with an outer space type game. Um, you know, having that sense of openness, uh, I think kind of helps sell the atmosphere. We are going to turn this off for now because as we're listening to everything else, I don't want you to be hearing it um, with the reverb bus affecting it. I want you to hear kind of the dry source audio as much as possible. Kind of the concept behind this, um, it's outer space. I wanted something that was interesting to listen to and had melody to it. I love melody. I need melody in almost everything I do, um, but also have a lot of textures to it and have that open kind of endless, vast soundscape feel to it. So, um, you know, we've got a lot of reverb on things. Let's take a look at the main sequencer here, and we're going to start at this marker here. So this uh, first thing in the chain is uh, this JS plugin. It comes with Reaper. It's a it's kind of a multifunction MIDI router tool. Um, this is a kind of a relic from an older patch I was using. I was trying a different sound at first, and instead of messing with the MIDI, I was just messing around with transposing some of it. All this thing is doing is dropping all the MIDI input down a full octave, 12 semitones. So it's um, it's not super important. It would have been just as easy to open up the MIDI um, data here and drop everything an octave, but it just stayed over and there's no reason to change it now. Um, from there, we're using a patch in um, image line Poison. I like this plugin. I, I think that um, it, it has some limitations to it that I consistently find extremely frustrating, but um, that being said, I, I usually end up getting a sound I like out of it when I choose to use it. Um, I don't know if I'd recommend buying it necessarily because there are probably other software solutions out there that are less frustrating. Um, but anyway, this is what we used here. Um, it's this uh, keyboard patch that uh, I did some tweaking to, um, mainly with the amplifier, I believe, and the envelope. Um, and then I was running the whole thing through this Tube Screamer. Uh, this is, I forget where this comes from. Where do you come from? Simul Analog Mono Tube Screamer, um, which I think adds a really cool uh, kind of guitar-y buzz to it. So it goes from this to this just kind of rounds it out and kind of fuzzes it up a bit. Um, I'm running it through another uh, tube screamer type thing, the uh, TSE BOD bass overdrive pedal. This is mainly meant for bass tones, but I really like the sound it gives it. And then we're EQing the absolute crap out of this. The, the original sound, as you can hear, is really low. There's a lot of low end and stuff in it. You know, it, it sounds cool as it is, but um, what I wanted it for in this was more of a round uh, sort of sound. So this kind of cuts out a lot of the low area that I wanted to keep open for the droning synths and stuff, as well as some of the high stuff that I think didn't sound too right in the space setting. I forget if I had the auto pan offer on, but uh, it's just a free auto pan plug in and... 
you can hear that if you're listening in headphones. It just kind of, you set up a LFO, you know, low frequency oscillator. Um, waveform basically set how wide you want that to go and then it auto pans it. Um, from there, we're using the Kierhaus Audio Classic Chorus, one of my favorites, cheap is free, awesome plugin, use it all the time. And this is a pretty strong chorus signal. Um, from there, we've got Native Instruments Replica, which was, believe it or not, a free download a while back. I think they're charging for it now, but oh my god, do I love this delay plugin. Um, it does delay and kind of reverb -y diffusion ambiance feels, and uh, it just makes a huge difference. So. Really cool. Um, I don't think I had this TSE 808 on. This was an. Um, I love this thing. This is another little overdrive plugin, but I wasn't. Um, I wasn't using it uh, in the context of this. I was trying it out for a while and then never pulled it. I just turned it off. Uh, so then we have another instance of Epic Verb, just on the track itself, and then. Um, well, we'll talk about that in a minute. So with and without. This is without. And now with. It's just really shimmery and beautiful. And then lastly, we have another round of EQ. Um, the reason I tend to usually do multiple EQs and things is I'll, I'll do an initial one to kind of set up the sound how I want it. And then um, when I'm in the context of mixing it with the other instruments, I will do a separate EQ plugin um, to tailor it as I need to to fit in the mix. And the reason I do it separately is because ReQ is a super low um, footprint uh, plugin. It's not going to take up a whole lot of RAM or uh, CPU or anything, but it helps to kind of be able to before and after it and also to keep track of which ones are, you know, we're at this stage in the mixing process. Um, that way you're not opening up a single EQ plugin and being like, wait, you know, of the 13 numbers here, which numbers were before and after. It also lets me put another one later in the chain. So without it, and now with it, Basically just scoops out a lot of mid space that was uh, that I needed for other instruments. Um, taking a look at what the actual melody is, let's open this, uh, drag it over, dual monitor, gotta love it. Um, the way Reaper sets up its thing is you can set up a MIDI line and then loop it. So the uh, uh, purple lines here represent the loop points. Um, taking a look at the melody, it's uh, very much in the key of A. Um, starts with uh, the upper octave, goes down, and then kind of plays around with this pentatonic sounding feel to it. Um, only borrowing from, you know, the five notes that would be in the pentatonic form of A minor instead of using everything that would be in A Aeolian or A Dorian, um, it, or A Phrygian, I guess. It, it helps give a more uh, loose feel to it. And then when you interject little bits of melody like right here, or little bits of um, notes that denote a more specific scale to it, it makes those stand out a bit more, um, but it doesn't make the whole thing sound overly Aeolian or overly Dorian or whatever. And uh, just for what it's worth, the, the inspiration behind this riff, um, or kind of the feel of this part of the song, um, really drew a lot from the Unreal Tournament soundtrack. Um, Alexander Brandon did some incredible stuff on that, and uh, if you listen through that or play that game or are familiar with it, you'll probably already be knowing what I'm talking about. Um, so that's kind of the first patch here. We're not going to go into the others with quite as much detail, um, but basically there's a, a secondary um, sequence patch here that volume fades in. And it's following um, the same note sequence. It's playing everything identical. Um, this guy is another Poison patch. I think I started by just copying and pasting or duplicating this whole track and then making changes to it. Um, very similar sort of signal chain setup. So the next real thing we're looking at is we've got this swell voices. Um, and this doesn't mean that these voices are all right guys, that they're swell, but that they swell in. And um, the kind of the guts of what this thing is, is it's a, it's a contact instrument. Um, what is this thing called? This is, hold on, I got my contacts library open here because I knew I'd be asking about this. I think this is Force Sampling. Yes, Afterlife. Um, Force Sampling Afterlife is a 
great plugin. I have the free version right now. I'm very much planning on picking up the um, the full one at some point. Um, haven't yet because the free one has so much awesome stuff in it. Um, so just listening to. It's just a really cool library. Um, so I've got two of these, one left, one right. And I believe they are doing almost identically the same thing. In fact, they are doing everything. What do we got here? We got some sort of A2 note. And then here we also got some sort of A2 note. So there you go, it's doing the same thing. Um, I have them panned hard left and hard right because I didn't want them bleeding up through the middle at all. So it's just following a, kind of a A, where are you, note, A to F to, why does it keep it up on that screen, D. So it, um, theory-wise, it, it's kind of a bit tricky because it starts with the A, which is the root note, but then as it starts traveling down the next two pad things, it kind of builds um, what ends up being a D chord, which, uh, you know, is kind of the fourth uh fourth degree chord of the A minor scale. So it starts by establishing the root, but then as it walks down, it's actually establishing a different chord altogether. Um, so we've got two instances of uh, this thing. We've got some EQ, this uh, free Haas effect here. Uh oh, here we go. When I close contact, like if it's open and then I shut it down and I start clicking on stuff, sometimes it takes a minute because contact likes to be in charge. So uh, free haws, basically what this does, um, you can tell I still need to donate to buy the full version of this. Um, but this is a, a program that simulates a more realistic panning style. Um, the the haws effect refers to the, as far as I know, or has effect. Um, if you're listening to something in an EQ spec, or I'm sorry, in a, a stereo spectrum of left and right, you know, even if something is totally at your left ear, your right ear is picking it up. It's just taking a little bit longer to get over there. So what this does is kind of deal with um, a slight volume difference and a slight timing delay between the left and right signal. It makes things a bit more, um, oh, what's the word? Realistic with panning. So I set this up and then I still hard panned it, which I think just kind of, it takes those two signals of the left and right with a slight delay and forces them both to the left with, I think, uh, it just kind of blurs it a bit and combined with the other one, um, which has the same thing, but focused on the right, see right image here and then left image there. I think it just kind of creates a, a bit of blurring to it that I like. Um, so that's the voices patch. Uh, from there, it just has some EQ. It has some uh, multi-band compression going on mainly, <laughs> guess where, up in these two frequencies, just to kind of handle some of the high end uh, that I wasn't liking from it uh, in this song without this. Or rather, it's it's putting some of them in there um, because the gain is set up and it's a high ratio. Anyway, those are the swell voices. Uh, coming down here to the swell bass. Um, what are you? You are another contact instrument. Another thing from um, For Sampling Afterlife. Uh, oh, come on. La, da, da. We gutted the shit out of the EQ on this thing just to get that low end. Um, it was doing a little weird tuning thing I didn't like, so I set up some pitch correction just to lock it in where I wanted it, um, compress, compress it pretty severely, and then roll off the low end a bit. And that guy sounds like this. And this is a great example here of um, why you need to test with um, the speakers you're using because iPhone and iPad speakers um, are notorious for not getting much low end. So this is the type of thing where I, I need to listen to it and see if it's cutting through at all or if there are any problems with it. And it's very quiet, but it's still there. Um, so this is, this is an important thing because, you know, you need to 
have that as part of your, your decision-making process, whether you decide you want to really fight to make the sound audible on an iPhone or just keep it there um, as something that will be better experienced when someone's listening through headphones or on a, you know, a sound system or something. What you don't want to do is just make a bunch of EQ changes and volume changes to guess what you need to have and then have it wreck up, you know, another, uh, another version of the mix. So that's that swell bass. Uh, on top of that, we have this bass pulse sound, which is. It's your kind of John Carpenter-esque bass. And uh, this guy is not contact. This is a program called uh, OPX Pro by Sonic Projects. Once again, great piece of software. I encounter also a good amount of frustration dealing with this interface for some reason. It, it seems like as soon as I wrap my head around how it wants me to do things, it, it's not correct. But uh, get some great sounds out of it. It's replicating an Oberheim uh, old school 80s keyboard. And then from there, we've got some shaping EQ, some compression, some chorus, a bit more uh, multi-band EQ. Ah, that wasn't supposed to go away. Um, Using the Slate Virtual Mix Rack uh, Revival plugin, just to add some thickness, quote unquote. This is a, a really good plugin, and I need to buy the full version, but um, it's it's really dumbed down. I mean, you have two knobs for thickness and shimmer, is what it's called for Christ's sake, but it works pretty well. Um, then a Transient Master here to kind of turn down the sustain a bit. This is a Native Instruments uh, transient shaping plugin that came with complete. Then a bit more EQ for the mix, and then another compressor. So um, just for the sake of argument, let's turn off a lot of this stuff so you can hear how it sounds before. So really cool, but really thick. So this takes up most of it. So I wanted something that was kind of punchy, but not overbearing in the mix. Um, it's not supposed to be a dance track. It's just supposed to kind of fill things out. And uh, what is this? This was doing a thing at some point. I think the reason I have this uh, cutoff envelope here, which is linked to the relative control here. Oh, look, something is happening. Do you see how something is happening regularly? What did I do with that? I think I set up a, uh, yeah, I set up a modulation on this. So it's always kind of um, changing that cutoff a bit, just so it fluctuates it regularly and kind of gives a bit of variety to it. Um, anyway, going on from there, we've got some, some string patches. Um, these are all contact patches. And I think I just used, yeah, session strings for each one um, with some virtual mix rec. Come on. There we go. Once again, just uh, <laughs> beefing up the thickness a little bit. Um, and then, so that's strings patch one, strings patch two, I think is a higher sound, the glissando sustain. And uh, these are here to just kind of fill out um, the other pad sounds that are going on um, at a certain point, not always, but it kicks in at a certain point. And uh, it gives a bit more of an organic element So taking a look at the uh, the actual MIDI data here, you know, we've got a lot of mod wheel stuff going in. I played all these in live. Um, I didn't program them. And um, they sound like shit right here because it's super dry. This is routing to the global reverb bus that is currently muted with, you know, a lot of it going in. That's what gives it that, the actual sound of, you know, being a bit more real. And then we uh, we double that with some higher notes here. And uh, you can see I do um, the modulation on doo -doo -doo, or the mod wheel rather on the lower notes is uh, lower in this one, so they're quieter. And in fact, I think the velocities are quieter too. What is this? This is about 49 here and over here. What is it? And also about the same.
so those blend together nicely. Um, and then, moving in from the strings, uh, we had to put some actual guitar in here because I'm a guitarist, I love having guitar stuff in things. And these are just little bent notes. Um, I adjusted some of the uh, the rates a bit because um, I think the tempo of the song changed after I'd recorded it. And I'm playing around with the panning and stuff here too, so it, uh, you know, has kind of a cool moving sound to it. And we've got some heavier notes here. Um, this guy here. This uh, this was something I recorded and then reversed, and on the take itself, it has a, a pitch control. What's going on with this here? So it's just a low note. That's what it is, and then I. Um, I kind of blended in a few different iterations. Yeah, so one octave up, no octaves up at seven semitones, which is a fifth, two octaves up and three semitones, which is basically a super high minor third, and then one octave up and 10 semitones, which is a minor 10. So it creates this kind of reverse swelling in minor seventh chord. and then the single hard hit. As far as getting, uh, getting the guitar sound itself, I recorded all this direct in. Um, we are using a little bit of EQ right off the bat. Uh, why'd you go away? And then good old Pod Farm. Uh, this is a, uh, a patch that um, I had downloaded and then heavily modified. Um, basically, it's just a jazz amp with some chorus and some tube drive on it. Um, little impulse response loader. Oh, that's the thing in pod farm. I am not, not using any cabinet within pod farm. Um, and, uh, so I used a couple of Mesa rectifier, um, impulses, uh, and this Rosen digital one. Rosen digital makes incredible impulse responses and they're pretty budget conscious. So if you're looking for guitar impulses, grab those a bit more EQ shaping, um, some chorus and delay. And then, of course, like everything else, it gets routed through this global reverb bus. Let me turn that back off for the time being. Uh, what are you? What is this little thing here? Didn't label it. It's another guitar line. Um, looks like it's running through pretty much the same thing. Uh, I just wanted one, uh, uh, an additional line here. And I, uh, you know, wanted to be able to adjust the volume separately. Um, from there, we've got some hi-hat sounds. This uh, this is a delay auxiliary just for the hi-hats. Um, all it does is receive uh, from the hi-hat bus and then send its audio to the global reverb bus. So let's take a look at what the hi-hats are in general first. Um, we've got a MIDI track that goes to two different... Here we go. This is how I did it. So we've got MIDI here which is sending to these two hat left and hat right channels like that. Hat left and hat right pan 30% left and 30% right, hence the clever naming. And uh, each one I think has pretty much the same signal chain on it. Yep, as evidenced by the fact that it looks like the same damn window. Um, it's running an instance of Easy Drummer with a hat sound on it, um, which is EQ'd to be really affected. Uh, we've got some transient stuff on here to cut the sustain and boost the attack a little bit. Um, we've pitched it somewhat, and we've got that Haas effect to kind of help with the weird panning aspect. And uh, so each one of these receives MIDI from here. This MIDI line just fuels those two. And what I've got going on, if you look closely, you can see that there's different colors here, blue and purple. That's because what I'm doing is I'm alternating, um, I'm alternating the channel here. So it sends the two different channels to the two different... Um, tracks down here and uh yeah taking a look at it um midi channel one gets sent to hat left midi channel two gets sent to hat right that way i can have this hat sound of so it's kind of subtly going left right left right left, 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 left that sort of thing 
Um, and this whole thing goes up to the hat delay. And uh, I have a phaser and some other stuff on here that kind of changes the sound of it throughout. Like uh, there's some parts where I have it, uh, I have it go much longer. Like normally it's going. Oh, this gets a little bit from the bass pulse too. But it's normally doing this, but then it kicks up sometimes. And in the context of the song, that's doing this. And uh, that's pretty much it. Um, I'd say, if anything, the, uh, the global reverb bus here is super important because without it, the whole song sounds good. I mean, I, as far as I can tell, I... I have no objectivity over my own music. You guys know how it is if you're musicians, but uh, sounds pretty cool, but it sounds much more in your face uh, and dry than I'd like. So adding this it's just a slight, slight little drifting element that really really adds to. But some of the patches especially because the, the strings come in here super hot. Um, so, you know, by turning off this global reverb, the strings really suffer. Um, but that was part of the mixing decisions in the process. There would be ways to mitigate that. But anyway, that's it. Once again, the game is Gala Collider. It is uh, running a Kickstarter campaign right now. The link is on the screen. Um, if you guys like this music, uh, just be advised I have two songs in this game and there's going to be a lot of other awesome music from some other musicians. And hey, the game itself actually <laughs> looks pretty fun. Um, it's really easy for me to focus on the music aspect, but um, the game looks rad. I'm, I'm personally pretty excited about it. So go check out the Kickstarter video. Uh, toss a few bucks that way if you're interested. And uh, we will be doing more um, recording and producing tor uh, tutorials on the days that I can actually speak. Even though this is uh, kind of spacey, melodic music, you got to keep the world metal. Thank you all for watching. Talk to you soon.